Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in JavaScript. Now I'm glad that you came. Now we're going to learn some really fun stuff. So probably the first thing we should learn and get out of the way is how to create comments. If you've learned any other kind of language, uh, any kind of markup language or programming language, you know what comments are. And what they are, are, they're just basically side notes for the developer. That's us. So um, in XHTML, and I believe regular HTML as well, uh, we learned that it was a that this was the syntax for a comment. Anything that went in between was your comment. Well, it's not quite the same in JavaScript. It's actually exactly the same as in C++. And basically, it's two forward slashes, and followed by whatever you want to be part of your code. It's that easy, two forward, forward slashes. So this is my first comment. We can also make it a multi-line comment. Instead of two forward slashes, just one, followed by an asterisk. Notice how the, everything else turned green down there. So this is my second line. And the mirror image, or the reverse, is then, it's just the same, just rever yeah, reversed with the characters. And that would, be, that would mark the end of your multi-line comment. So that's basically the difference between single line and multi line comments. Uh, so let's uh, write some text to our document, to our web page. So, almost any kind of modifying that we do to our web page, we would start with, with what's called a document object. We're not going to really learn about objects or any kind of that fancy stuff yet. That's down the line. But, anyways, you just write down document.write. Now, a good coding practice is to always end your lines with semicolons. We did this with style sheets, but that's because we had to. But in JavaScript, we don't have to, but it's recommended, especially if you've uh, learned any other kind of language like C Sharp.net or C++. I, uh, I believe all of them, they all end with semicolons, so it'll, it'll be good to do that. Type in a, a pair of parentheses, and you can type in whatever you want to have appear on your web page. So I'll type in hi. I'll click save. And then I'll go to files. I have to open my page, open my index file, and let's see what pops up. Oh, the word hi is there. Well, that's pretty cool. And we can just keep adding on more and more highs. So let's just try that. Let's write multiple of these. Click save. And I actually have to reopen the whole file. I can't just refresh the browser and now we have a bunch of highs but they're all next to each other how do we make it so there's a space in between well there's also something called the right line method so the line is just add ln think about natural logs if you're in the math actually don't that would make it really confusing so I'll just save that and I keep minimizing the window I want to actually close it reopen it and now we have spaces in between. Well, that's great, but how we get them down to the next line? We, we got spaces next to them, but we just want to break it. Well, believe it or not, within these, between these quotes, we can add in HTML tags. So for an example, I can use the break tag. I'll click save. Then, uh, again, you know what, I think I can refresh it. Oh, there we go. It did work. That's cool. Uh, and then, yeah, as you can see, it broke after that first line. So, yeah, that's pretty much basic writing text to a document. So the next uh, in line are dialog boxes. So dialog boxes are basically, they're kind of like pop-ups, but they're not pop-ups. They're not different windows. Pop-ups are different windows. But these are basically just little dialog boxes that appear front and center on your web page and they say something and they might ask you for information. So let's start with a basic alert box. Now inside the alert box we can type in a message. Basic programmers first sentence they usually they usually mess with. So let's uh, see what happens. I'll refresh the page and I get this dialog box that's called hello world. Now, if you're using another browser, I know Internet Explorer, it doesn't look nice like this. It's, an, it, it's one of those other kind of windows that goes, doo -doo, 
when it opens, so it's not as nice. And as you can see, we don't have any of those other document rights, so they're gone. Another one is the confirm. And what the confirm dialog box does, it gives you an OK and a cancel option. So I could say, Welcome to our site. Well, that's not really something that you would cancel. That's more like an alert. I can't really think of a good confirm example. But then I'll press F5, and now we have an OK and a cancel. And until later in JavaScript, we won't, um, we won't learn how we can actually differentiate results by clicking the OK button versus the cancel button. Like sometimes you might, it might say, are you sure you want to leave? Kind of a thing. Uh, there, that's a good example. Are you sure you want to leave? If you click cancel, you'll stay. If you click OK, then you'll go to whatever website you want to. That, that's an example of using a confirm box. Another one is the prompt. Whoops. Now the prompt, you actually put in two pieces of data. So I can type in, uh, I can have any of this. Type in a number. It doesn't have to be a number, it could be a string as well. Then you put down a comma and then whatever you want the default value to be. It can be a string such as type here. I'll click save and when I refresh the page it says type in a number and it already has the words type here highlighted for you so the focus is already there. So I'll click cancel. You can also use numbers. Now as opposed to strings where you're, they're surrounded by quotes you just type in the number like this and it will be read. So then when you refresh the page now you have the number zero there. So that's pretty simple enough. And of course there's no data, it's not collecting data or anything because we have not scripted it to do so. Alright, so next are the declaration of variables and variables are probably very important with the prompt method but I'll just keep that off for a moment. In order to declare a variable you type in VAR, that's pretty easy enough, and you see how it actually changed color there. Then the name of the variable. Now, um, the variable, you can name it any, any way, or anything that you want, but there are uh, certain guidelines you have to follow by. It must start with either an al alpha, which is a letter, uh, an underscore, or a dollar sign. Yeah, I don't know why you would start with a dollar sign, but it does work. But I'll just put down underscore atom, and you can set that equal to an either a number or a string or another variable but we don't have another variable yet so I'll just make it five then maybe I'll cut this no I'll just erase this completely then using the alert box I'll have it print underscore Adam so what do you think is gonna come up let's see what happens the number five popped up that's because we set we um we made that variable equal to five. We set that variable equal to five. And you, you can make it equal to a string as well. And then strings, again, must always be between quotes. So, Adam, I'll click Save. When I refresh the page, now it says Adam. Well, that's pretty cool. So, um, and even though it has to start with either an underscore, dollar sign, or... A, a, any kind of letter, all the other characters must either only be underscores, letters, or numbers. But you can't have numbers at the beginning. That's, I know, it's kind of weird, but that's the truth. Uh, and now there's just one more piece of information I want to show you, and that's how to combine variables with a prompt box. So I would like to create a variable. I'm going to get rid of this. In fact, I'll just get rid of this and use this. So I want to create a variable called x. And I want to set that equal to prompt. I know this is going to be a this might be a little complicated to understand. But we have our two pieces of information. So we can set this to a string right here. 
type in a number or you know what type in a sentence and then the sentence here can be uh, by default I'll just make it high when this prompt box pops up whatever the user types in for this value because it will be replaced unless they keep the high it will then be equal to this x value so then we can then print that value so the alert can be x so I press F5 I'll type in myself when I click OK now the word myself pops up this is just a feature of Firefox so you don't have to worry about this you can also make it equal to a number so um, well actually I don't need to change this uh, but let's see what happens when you uh, make it a number instead notice that it could be something else as a result but it's not you can type in a number and you don't have to worry about it you have a number right there and uh, that this was a little complicated to understand uh, declaring a variable with the prompt method whatever the user types in that little text box will become this variable so this 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 was a little bit uh, difficult to understand but um, but yeah we'll get into more detail of the variables and what we can do with them in the next video